Hey guys, this is a bit of a thrown together extra intro because uh, it turns out that D for the PlayStation 2 set is massive. So I've had to split the uh, video into two videos just in order to fit it in because no one's going to watch it on the size that it originally was. So we're continuing today with D from the PlayStation 2 set that I've got next to me here. Let's get straight into it. Bolt. Based on the uh, film that I've not seen, is a game that I hardly played. Kids uh, third person uh, 3D platform action adventure. Yep, there you go. Next one up we got Disney Dinosaur and uh, I really, really did not like this game. I'm sorry guys, I just really didn't like it. It didn't click with me at all. I had no real idea what the hell I was supposed to be doing and it just doesn't work for me. Sorry. Donald Duck PK. And the remastered version of uh, Donald Duck Quack Attack. A lot of fun, these ones. Quack Attack's a classic from the 16-bit era, if I remember correctly, or is it the N64 part member? But yeah, help Donald Duck on a quest. He has to save the kidnapped Daisy from the clutches of the evil magician Murloc. Okay, so I had a lot of fun with this one. Great 3D, so uh, probably the N64 era, if I remember correctly. Great 3D uh, action-adventure game. Suitable for kids, suitable for adults, had a lot of fun, get Quack Attack. Although I have heard that a lot of people say the original's better than the uh, PS2 remake. And then we have Donald Duck PK, which makes him look a bit like a superhero. Play as PK, the futuristic sci-fi superhero. Oh my goodness, <laughs> the cover did not lie. Defend the Earth against the invasion of evil... <laughs> the invasion of evil Evronians. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of more of the same, but uh, different. Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. Let's do Tony Hawk with Disney characters, said Activision. Let's not put much effort in and make it really bad, said Activision, probably. It's one of the worst games from the Disney set. It's... it just... <sighs> It should have been good, but it's not. It's a disappointment. What wasn't, though, is Disney G-Force. Now, this is based on a film I've not seen, and actually, I had a lot of fun with it. I was very surprised by this. It's a third-person, 3D platform action-adventure game with a lot of uh, having to morph and change and do weird things with your gerbils, I think they are. And actually, it's really good fun. It's a surprising one, a definite hidden gem. Disney Golf. It's golf with Disney characters. It's not bad. If you're into golf and you don't want to play Tony Hawk, well, give Disney Golf a try. It's actually surprisingly decent. Disney's The Haunted Mansion. We're on a theme here, aren't we? This one, it just didn't click with me. It's kind of trying to be like a 3D action-adventure Ghostbusters type of thing. I'm pretty sure it's based on the film, which I think had Eddie Murphy in it. Again, not seen the film. It's it's all right, but it felt a little bit too linear for, for me to enjoy, but you never know, kids might like it. If there's anything going that's really popular. Disney has made a PlayStation 2 game based on it. This one is Disney Move, apparently as seen on TV. It's Disney's iToy game set. It's iToy games. If you like iToy games or your kids like iToy games, they'll probably find this fun. I played it. It was all right. It's not the best, not the worst. Disney's Peter Pan, The Legend of Neverland. 3D standard children's 3D action platformer adventure game. It's not bad. It could have been an awful lot better, but it could have been an awful lot worse. I mean, the characterization of Captain Hook there kind of gives you an idea of the style they're going for, and it just didn't work quite well for me. But you never know, it might be all right. Piglet's Big Game, another of the Disney ones. You know what, guys? I was very surprised by this. This is a game for very, very young kids, and it is one of the most beautiful looking games on the PlayStation 2. I kid you not, when this finally focuses and you see the quality of this, I was amazed. It looks really good, it controls really well, it's one of the later PlayStation 2 ones where the, the people doing it really, really knew their stuff and how to get the best out of the machine. 
It's actually a really good game. It is for little kids, so don't expect uh, much challenge. But it looks great, it works great, and I think it's actually pretty, pretty damn good. So yeah, a surprising one there. Disney Pixar Cars. And Disney Pixar Cars Matter National Championships, which took me ages to find. Not a rare one, just one of those annoying ones that doesn't show up an awful lot. So, let's start with this one, Matter National International. Yeah, it's just racing. Disney Pixar Cars, it's racing. Could have been an awful lot better, to be honest with you. It is kind of an open world racing game, but... It's still all about racing. It doesn't quite work for me. The one that actually surprised me, though, is uh, the Cars game on uh, Disney Infinity. If you have Disney Infinity and you try the Cars game, you will you will know what I mean. It's a real proper open world action game, and it's really good fun. These I wasn't so happy about. They just they just didn't work for me. But what did? really really did is Disney's Kim Possible What's the Switch? Well Kim the Switch is a Nintendo console that came out an awful long time after the PS2 so I don't know why you're asking about it. Jokes aside though this is one of those hidden gems that you really really must play like with Despicable Me this is a 2.5D action platformer in the traditional style. It's so good. If you're into retro and you like your platformers, you need to play this game. I am not kidding with you. It looks great. It controls great. The action is great. It's just a good game. And I was really, really surprised when I found it. So yeah, definitely want to pick up. Then we have Disney's Monsters, Inc. Scare Island. Now I've shown you this with the art cards in this set of special editions that I've got. I do have this version as well because I don't want to keep opening and closing the cardboard box for the other version. It's not bad. It's, again, it's the traditional style of uh, PS2 Disney game. 3D uh, action platformer, tie-in with the film. Not bad at all. Not the best, but not the worst. But f in fact, far from the worst. Then we have... Uh, Disney Pixar Ratatouille, which I can't remember playing an awful lot, to be honest with you. Again, 3D action-adventure tie-in with the film. Make of it what you will. The PS2 kept going for quite a while, didn't it? So now we have uh, a tie-in with Up, which I'm surprised to see was actually on the PlayStation 2. I'd, I'd have thought by this point it would have been 360 and PS3 only, but no, PS2 just kept on going. So we have another 3D action platformer. If you if you know by now what they're like, then you know what to expect. And, uh, yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> I do like uh, competing aerial dogfight combat. Dogflight combat. It should have been dogfight, guys. Competing aerial dogfight combat. It actually was dogs flying. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I kind of liked it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't the best. It's far from the worst. I've said that a lot, but it's true. They're not bad games. You know exactly what you're getting. Certain amount of polish for um, Disney. So, yeah, not bad. Okay, guys, if you're sick of Disney by now, you're going to hate this because here we go. Disney's Wall-E. And let's just try and let that focus in. Hooray, there it is. Wall-E. Hello. Again, the PS2 I would have thought would have been gone by this point, but nope. Another 3D action uh, brawler platformer. Yeah, with a few extra levels, like blasting things, so you get a bit of a shooting gallery part, but most of it is, yeah, much of a muchness. If you like that kind of thing, you will like it. If you don't, you don't. Oh my goodness. Disney Princess Enchanted Journey with free Cinderella storybook. See inside the details, which means it wasn't in the case. I probably could find it on eBay, but I haven't bothered. This game is not really much of a game. It's uh, it's a dress-up simulator with a few other things and mini games. It's oh, it's so dull. Disney Sing It. Disney Sing It pop hits. So we got two of them here, and yeah, I was sure I had Disney Sing It for quite a while. But uh, it turns out I didn't, so <laughs> there we go, I had to pick it up. I could have got it at 5 pence, I ended up paying about 50. Ugh. For 5p I wouldn't have minded too much, but the problem is, these are basically just SingStar, but with Disney's own licensed songs. And uh, I don't like them. 
So, they're much of a muchness. I'm not a fan. If your kids are into that era of Disney songs, they'll probably like it. I really did like this one, though. Disney Stitch Experiment 626. Really had a lot of fun with this one. Again, it's a 3D action platformer, but it's a good 3D action platformer. I had a lot of fun. Great one. Tarzan Free Ride is not a good one. It looks like it's going to be a kind of uh, 3D action adventure, but it doesn't. It just doesn't work. There's something wrong with it. Something missing with this one. So, wasn't a big fun one for me. Disney Think Fast, the family quiz game. This is Disney's version of Buzz. Like I told you before, anything that was popular, Disney made a version of it, and it even says it requires the Buzz buzzers. This is just Buzz, only with Disney stuff and Disney characters. It's not as fun as Buzz. What is fun, though, is Toy Story 3. This is a hell of a game. It's another one where it's a 3D action platformer, but it's got the qualities to it of um, Despicable Me and uh, Kim Possible. Really good. I've thoroughly enjoyed playing it, and I do recommend that one. What have we got next? Well, it's Disney's Treasure Planet, because Disney just keeps on going. Not a film I've seen, actually. I really should get uh, a chance to see it one time, but I haven't yet. And this is one of those uh, really fun... Because I don't know the film, I didn't have any expectations going in. So it was a fun surprise. Decent action-adventure platformer. Not bad. I had a fair bit of fun with it. Disney continues. Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. Another one that is the same as uh, the uh, Piglet one, where it's just beautiful to look at. It's really well done, and I was very impressed. Again, though, it is for very young kids, so how much uh, enjoyment you personally get out of it is, uh, well, it's all down to uh, how old you are and how easily you are able to uh, reclaim your inner child, as the uh, New Age weirdos say. DJ Dex and Effects House Edition. This isn't a game, it's uh, like music creation. If you're into that stuff, it's actually not bad. Uh, Jen, my wife, had a lot of fun with this because she's really into uh, club music and uh, is a uh, former DJ. So she had a lot of fun with it. Me, not so much. DJ Hero, on the other hand, I actually liked. A lot of people... Uh, slated DJ Hero and the second one as well because it was more plastic tat at a time when the economy was starting to tank and people didn't want more plastic tat that was expensive uh, filling up their houses. But personally, I had a lot of fun with this, especially because uh, I played it uh, multiplayer with some friends at a party one time with one of them on the DJ uh, scratch desk and me playing Guitar Hero controller because apparently you could do that. I can't remember whether you can do that on the PlayStation 2 version. We played the Xbox 360 version, and you could definitely do it there. So they were remixing on the fly the uh, notes that I was playing, and it was really good fun. So yeah, I actually had a fair amount of fun in this one. It's worth picking up. DNA, Dark Native Apostle. This one is an odd one from Hudson with the Hudson B. It's a bit of a brawler, a 3D brawler, and... I need to play this again because, yeah, I actually had a fair amount of fun with it. But it's been a while, so, yeah, I definitely need to play that again. Dodgeball from 505 Games. Uh, I wanted to like this. I really did. It's got chunky Amiga-esque graphics, and it should be a lot of fun. It should be like, uh... It should be be a bit like um, the uh, dodgeball equivalent of NBA Jam. That's what I was hoping it would be, but it just, it was lacking something and I could never put my finger on what it was. It just didn't work for me. Another one that didn't work for me, Dog's Life. It's a role-playing game where you play as a dog. That is not a joke. You do dog things and have dog adventures. Yeah, no school, no chores, no clothes. It's great being a dog. Yeah, it's a dog adventure game. I am not joking. Then there's dogs with a Z, because that way you can trademark it. Uh, choose your favourite puppy from over 40 different breeds and make him look adorable with clothing and accessories. Yeah, it's a set of dog mini games. 
Don Quixote. I took an age to find this. I'm pretty sure it's based on a film, but it's a film I've never even heard of. The only reason I'm saying it's based on a film is because Filmax Entertainment, down the bottom there. So, this is a 3D action adventure that feels an awful lot like it wants to be Shrek, but isn't. And uh, it's got that kind of Shrek look to it. It's got that kind of Shrek uh, gameplay to it from the Shrek games. And if you've played those, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, my chair is very squeaky today. It's not bad. It just... There's something missing, and I'm sad to say that. Dora the Explorer, Journey to the Purple Planet. There is another Dora the Explorer game, but I don't have it yet. And, uh, yeah, it's a kid's 3D action platformer. I wasn't massively, massively uh, enamoured with it, but it's it's functional. It works. Downforce, Speed, Danger, Adrenaline. It's a racing game. It's a fast racing game. It's not bad. I mean, the uh, woman on the left there is basically there for sex appeal. The game itself is actually a racing game. Actually, I didn't mind it. It wasn't bad. It's not the best racer, but it's not bad. Downhill Domination. This... <sighs> okay, let's turn it over and see where it is. This is a bike action racing game. I had a lot of fun with this one. This one is worth playing. It's great fun. Had a lot of fun with it. Downtown Run. Now this is one that people mention every now and again. And uh, it's it feels like a budget racing game, but it's not. It's by Ubisoft. So it's not bad. I think it kind of wants to be Forza, but it's not. Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 Dragon Ball Z Budokai Denkaichi Dragon Ball Z Budokai Denkaichi 2 Dragon Ball Z Budokai Denkaichi 3 Dragon Ball Z Infinite World These are all essentially the same sort of game 3D and I do mean 3D, these people fly Brawlers. It's Street Fighter with flying superheroes. If you're into that, you will like any of these. They all essentially are the same sort of game. Beat the crap out of people, fly around, be a superhero who's in a fight. If you like that kind of thing, you'll love it. Personally, I prefer one that's a bit more uh, grounded, because that way I don't have to try and work out the flying controls <laughs> and essentially do an air combat simulator at the same time as playing Street Fighter. It just didn't work for me. It might work for you. It certainly worked enough that there are seven games. So yeah, give them a try if you're into that. One that really did work for me though is Dragon's Lair 3D Special Edition. It's Dragon's Lair in 3D. It's an action platformer, but it's Dragon's Lair levels of hard with Dragon's Lair levels of fun. It's really well done. It's got a lot of charm to it. I really, really like this game, but I warn you now, it's hard as nails. Seriously, it's a really hard game. But once you know the uh, techniques and all of the uh, timings, you can get through it like a breeze. Same as the original arcade game in that respect. I had a lot of fun with this one. I really, really do enjoy it. Now we come to Dragon Quest Journey of the Cursed King. Uh, it took me a while to get a copy of this in good condition, and I'm glad I did because it's a really good game. Basically, if you like Final Fantasy but don't like the uh, melodramatic plots where all of these uh, disparate people have to come together and become lifelong friends in order to defeat God by the power of friendship, well, if you don't like that, try Dragon Quest instead because it's the same sort of game, only a different, more grounded, more interesting plot of a different type. Uh, a mysterious uh, jester, a forbidden scepter, a fiendish curse. A once idyllic kingdom lies entangled in a web of enchanted vines. Its king and princess hideously transformed. Its castle and subjects frozen in time. Only one person has survived this horror unscathed. It's you! Only you can save your king and country by lifting the shadow of the evil jester's curse. Far more Western style of uh, plot there, really, isn't it? So, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. Dragon Rage from 3DO. I can't remember buying this. 
Sorry guys, I really can't. I know I've tried it. Um, perform spectacular aerial maneuvers in full 360 degree f free flight, including loops, barrel rolls, and many other tricks. Okay. Is this uh, the PlayStation's answer to, um, oh, what's that one on Sega? Because I can never remember the name of, and I have, um, I have a one on Xbox, uh, Auto. I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's that kind of thing. It, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to describe when you literally cannot remember playing the game. I know I have played it, but I, it's one of the early ones that I picked up for the collection, if I remember correctly. And it's been a long time. I'll have to play it again. Drakan, the Ancient's Gates. So, what can we say about Drakan, the Ancient's Gates? Well, the cover is poor CGI. And uh, it's an action RPG. Yeah. So there we are. Rin, a brave female warrior and Arok, a fearless dragon of the Elder Breed, are called upon to save the spirit dragons and restore order. I remember playing this and being a bit confused about the flying mechanics, but enjoying the game once I got the hang of it. It's a proper 3D, like, flying around 3D game, and it, I actually remember it being decent at the time, so it's one I'll have to have another look at. So then we have Dragon Guard and... Dragon Guard 2, which was a real bugger to get a good copy of. <sighs> Some of these are getting to the point where they're actually hard to find. Dragon Guard and Dragon Guard 2, Square Enix, but Ubisoft, yeah. So, it's more of an action brawler style of RPG game. Uh, Dynasty Warriors, that kind of thing. Yeah, I had a fair amount of fun with these. They're not bad. If, you, if you're into that kind of... Um, massive fighting uh, action brawler type of game, then you'll have a bit of fun. I did. Dr. Doolittle, one of the worst games on the PlayStation 2. I am not kidding. It is one of the worst games on the PlayStation 2. You want around an isometric 3D arena that would look terrible on an Atari ST or Amiga. And this, remember, is a 128-bit super system. And you talk to animals. It's one of the worst games I've ever played. Driven. What drives you? Just actually called Driven. It's a driving game. It's a racing game. It's a generic one. It's not bad, but it is a budget one, so don't expect massive amounts of polish. Uh, I had fun with it. And then Driven to Destruction, which, funnily enough, is not a sequel to Driven. It's a bit of a burnout clone, but not... It's a it's a bit of a weird one. Um, rip through the car rage in twenty five insane events. It's like stock car car battles. It's hard to describe. You've really got to play it. It's fairly cheap, so if you think that sounds kind of interesting and maybe up your street, definitely give it a try. I kind of enjoyed it. I have to admit. If you like good games, you won't like this. Driver three. Oh my goodness! How can we? Describe Driver 3 without mentioning how bugged to hell that it is. This game can't be updated. The Xbox version, the original Xbox version, had a patch because Xbox was online. But if you weren't online, you didn't get the patch, and uh, the PlayStation 2 version couldn't do that at all because it didn't have a hard drive to put the uh, patch data on. It wants to be Grand Theft Auto 3. It could have been Grand Theft Auto 3. It could have been a beta for Grand Theft Auto. It was, it had the pedigree to do it, but they rushed it. It needed more time to fix the bugs. And as a result, it's a buggy, broken mess and a massive waste of potential. I wanted this to work and be great, and it just doesn't. I'm sorry, guys. Then we had Driver Parallel Lines, and this is what Driver 3 should have been. This is a good one. It's like Grand Theft Auto style, but it's set in two different timelines. And it's really, really good. It's much better than uh, you would expect, especially if your first introduction to Driver was Driver 3. So, yeah, get this version instead. It's actually a lot of fun. Drome Racers. This is a Lego racing game. And it's one of the hardest Lego games to get on the entire uh, platform. So, it's Lego Racing. 
it's not brilliant Lego racing, unfortunately, because, uh, yeah, you kind of build your cars and then race, and it, it's fun, but uh, you really need to really get into it to start uh, getting the best out of it. So, yeah, it's if you're into racing and Lego, give it a try. If you're not, it's probably not for you. Dropship United Peace Force. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Air Combat, pretty damn good. I did have a fair amount of fun with this. So, yeah, if you're into your arcade military air combat type of things, uh, this is not a bad one. I had a fair amount of fun with this. Okay, the next one, Dual Masters. Now, I'm going to assume that this is some kind of card game because it says contains free, 10 free trading cards and it's a limited edition. I don't have the trading cards. I've never found a copy of this that has the trading cards in it. I'm pretty sure the people who are into Dual Masters only bought the game to get the cards. So it's got a nice shiny cover though. Look at that. That's really nice. It's a card game brawler. Like, it's weird. Yeah. So it's a card fighting game. Yeah. There's no other way to describe it, it's just that weird. The Dukes of Hazard, Return of the General Lee. It's based on the original show rather than the uh, remake film. Slide into the General Lee and blaze through the back roads of Hazard County in a high flying adventure to halt Boss Hogg's latest scheme. With Bo, Luke, Daisy, and the rest of the TV cast, you're in for a good old fashioned joyride, Duke style. Includes bonus interviews. So if you're into the original series, the bonus interviews are probably fun. <sighs> it's not a good game. D-Unit Drift Racing. Now this one is one that, uh, if I remember correctly, um, Pete from On A Retro Tip sent to the show. So thank you, Pete. And uh, it's a bit of an odd one. High speed drifting at its best, you can almost smell the burnt rubber. I'll take your word for it, I have no sense of smell, so uh, no I can't. You can probably tell from uh, the way I'm talking that uh, I have no sense of smell. <laughs> it's it's a stunt racing game. If you can hear that weird noise in the background, it's because uh, the rain is coming down really hard. Sorry about that. It's a stunt racing game. It's It's fun, but this game, it's super hard to get. It was low print run and not many people bought it. So it's not the best game ever, but yeah. So what have we got next? Dynamite 100, another one from Phoenix. It's all games. It's remakes of old games. It says here, Dynamite 100 is a collection of 100 mini games in different genres. This is the Action 52 of the PlayStation 2. I am, I am not kidding. So we've got Arcade, Puzzle, Racing, and many others. So what we got? Pingu's, Falling Bricks. I think we know what Falling Bricks will be. Is it Tetris? Yes, it is. Fall Down, Strike, Chameleon. None of these are in alphabetical order, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, I am going to do a Game Hammer special where we go through all 100 of these games in one video. Maybe two videos. And we'll see how it goes. But my goodness... This is hard to find sometimes. It comes and goes in how uh, easy it is to get. But it's not good. How can it be? It's 100 games on one disc. Dynasty Tactics. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, so Dynasty Tactics. We're coming to the end of the Ds now. This is the tactical version of Dynasty Warriors. If you're into tactical games... This is a good one to have. I'm not joking. It's it's pretty good. It's very detailed. The historicalness of it is great. It's from the, uh, the I think it's the Three King Kingdoms period of China. And yeah, I had a fair amount of fun with it. I'm not the biggest uh, fan of tactical games, but I had a fair amount of fun with this one. So let's just jump into it. Dynasty Warriors 2. I played this first on a demo. I think it's a demo that came with my PlayStation 2, in fact, and I adored it, but could never find a copy on the shelves around me at the time. So, yeah, 
It's actually published by Midas, but uh, created by Koei. So, oh, is it Koei or Koei? Uh, Koei. It might be Koei. I'm not an anti My pronunciation of Japanese is terrible due to the fact that I actually can speak Japanese, but I'm deaf, so I can't speak it very well, and certainly not with the right accent, because I can't learn what the, what the sounds are due to the fact that I can't hear it properly. It's very annoying. But yeah, Dynasty Warriors 2. I had so much fun with the demo of this that I looked uh, around for getting a copy, and it took me ages to find one. So, yeah. Definitely one worth playing. It's, you know what uh, Dynasty Warriors is. It's essentially an arena brawler on a massive scale. So, Dynasty Warriors 3. Dynasty Warriors 3 Extreme Legends, which is essentially just more Dynasty Warriors 3. I know people say, oh no, there's differences. Yeah, there are, but come on, it's Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors 4. Oh, I'm just knocking the camera there. Sorry about that. So, Dynasty Warriors 4. Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires. Again, bit more Dynasty Warriors. I know there are differences, I know there are differences, but it's Dynasty Warriors. The Extreme Legends Dynasty Warriors 4, so there are three Dynasty Warriors 4, two Dynasty Warriors 3, and one Dynasty Warriors 2. So yeah, and then just to round it all off, Dynasty Warriors 5, Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires, and Dynasty Warriors 5 Extreme Legends. Uh, yeah, what can I say? They're all great, but I really do prefer Dynasty Warriors 2 to the rest. Possibly due to nostalgia factor, it's the first one I played. It's the first one I actually fell in love with, with, this, with the genre. I really do enjoy them, though. Get a copy if you're into your arena battlers and you fancy setting it in ancient China or middle China, or whatever it is. I, I can never... My knowledge of Chinese history is sadly lacking and basically comes from computer games, so I'm probably not the best to come and ask about Chinese history, actually. So let's leave that. That's the end of D. And we went out on a decent one. So there you are. Bye! Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It is a pretty substantial set of uh, games there, but some of them are excellent. And in fact, D has some of the best games on the PlayStation 2 in it. So I hope you have found something that you liked there. Okay, if you did, remember to click that like button and share it, of course, so that your friends know about some good games when they see them. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. And I've been Zoe Cook Robinson. You've been watching Game Hammer Extras, where we've been looking at some of the PlayStation 2 games. And I'll see you next time. If you liked today's video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And an extra special thanks goes out to Chief89 and Tepic. Thank you.